I turn my thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell. In your kingdom, nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony for watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. and joy that his spirit expressed I find his me dear God and make manifest I turn within dear Lord for there you dwell in my heart of hearts where all is well the love the peace and joy that his spirit expressed I find his me dear God and make manifest I turn within dear Lord for there you dwell in my heart of hearts where all is well the love, the peace and joy that his spirit expressed everyone welcome to the temple of light center for spiritual living lifeline it's a joy to welcome you here this evening and it was such a joy listening to stevie's beautiful music i turn within dear lord for there you dwell we're going to have a really exciting evening we have a special guest and i'll tell you a little bit about her in a while but we like to begin as we begin all things with God and with prayer. So I'm going to invite our assistant minister, Reverend Ann Shan, to do our opening affirmative prayer. Reverend Ann. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Sandy. We just go within and just know that that infinite wisdom and intelligence that brought us all together this evening, it's that wisdom that conducts this webinar. So I know that every perfect idea of a spirit's highest idea of empowerment, transformation, and good flows through each one of us easily, effortlessly, and joyously. I speak for Reverend Sonia Byrne. I speak for Sandra, myself, and all who are listening to this webinar and know that that presence and power is doing its perfect work in through as us. So we just enjoy this evening. We relax in the knowledge and understanding that indeed all is well. I truly give thanks that all this is so, and so it is. So it is. Thank you so much, Reverend Anne. And you know, it's, it's awesome that we are together again, again for our fourth lifeline. Um, I say a special welcome to our pastor, Reverend John Scott, who I know is joining us on Facebook. Welcome, Reverend John. 
I know you're off on vacation, but you can't keep away from us now, can you? So I'm really, really glad to know that you're there what, um, being part of us uh, in this wonderful experience on Facebook. Now, friends, our very, very special guest this evening has more than 20 years of leadership experience across the financial, academic, manufacturing, distribution, and retail sectors. She holds an honors Bachelor of Arts and Science from the University of Toronto, a certified human resources leaders designation from the Human Resources Association of Canada, and a master's of consciousness studies from Holmes Institute and the School of Spiritual Leadership with Centers for Spiritual Living, CSL. Her experience and entrepreneurial background has led her to work in Canada, USA, United Kingdom, and the Middle East, North Africa region. As Executive Director of Centers for Spiritual Living, she is responsible for the overall program planning, policy, policy development, fiscal management, administration, and operation of all Centers for Spiritual Living functions, activities, and programs. She oversees the organization's global priorities and drives organizational performance in alignment with the CSL strategic plan. Friends, the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is delighted to have her as our very special guest this evening. So we know we're gonna have a wonderful conversation, a great discussion. We invite you to, to write your questions in the chat and be part of this wonderful experience. And so I invite you to join me. She's, we've also designated her an honorary Jamaican. So join me in extending a very warm Jamaican welcome to our special guest, Reverend Sonia Byrne. Oh. Reverend Sonia. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be an honorary Jamaican. I, I'm from the island of Newfoundland off the east coast of Canada. And of course, we are twinned with Jamaica. So we have a lot of the same customs, some of the same food, some of the same words. So I feel very comfortable. Thank you. And thank you for that lovely welcome. Well, it is beautiful to be here with you folks online and for those that will watch later. I've been asked to spend a bit of time with you speaking about spiritual tools and practices for a time such as this. It has been a very interesting time being in leadership as your executive director for Centers for Spiritual Living over the past five to six months. Like many of you here, you had uh, personal goals and plans for the year 2020. And you've had, if you're in business or leadership, you've had plans that you've had to set aside. We as an organization have had to do the same. I was saying to uh, Sandra in our, our time ahead of starting that I'm really enjoying those 2020 memes that we're seeing on Facebook these days. And you know, humor is, is part of the process. <laughs> of moving through any large change. So I'm delighted to see that we've gotten to some sense of humor. And my favorite has been, uh, dear 2020, uh, this was not on my vision board. <laughs> so if my vision board as the executive director includes our strategic plan, includes our budget, includes our education uh, calendar, uh, includes event planning, and a lot of that while we are still working with it and sometimes parallel to it, we have really had to, to stop and focus on what needed our attention in, in each moment. So our lives altogether changed in around March and uh, we've had the great opportunity here at the CSL home office in uh, Denver, Colorado, in Golden, just uh, up the hill in the mountains up above mm -hmm. Denver. Uh, we have had the opportunity to be labeled as an essential service, which meant that since March, myself and a number of people, as we've been allowed by local legislation, we have been able to come in to the home office and continue the good work and continue the basic business operations to support our over 500 communities and works that span 32 countries. 
And so the Temple of Light here in Jamaica is one of those beautiful global communities. And as we move forward into the rest of 2020, people are asking, what is it going to look like? How are we going to wind down? Mm. And I have had people ask about a crystal ball or a magic eight ball or, you know, um, cards or how are how are business people yeah. managing? And I think as a as a business person who is also deeply rooted in spiritual practice, we have to look within like the song just a moment ago, we look within to what's important. We look outside ourselves to what those around us need. And we also take a moment to consider what we ourselves need. So there's more than one tool in our toolkit. I promised that I'd have a couple of slides and I'm gonna go ahead and share those right now. So we have uh, in the Centers for Spiritual Living, we have an organizational design model. It's often called the ODM as an acronym. And our spiritual tools, our spiritual practices that we have are these spiritual practices. So we have this toolkit already as a member in our organization. We have this toolkit that we can go to. Now, when something like uh, tensions on the street, uh, weather patterns that are happening, a global pandemic, all of these things can throw us off our center and indeed throw us off our spiritual center. But when we are rooted in these practices, we have a place to go back to. We have a place to direct and guide others around us that need our support. We have a place to go to. So what I notice by looking at these particular spiritual tools, these practices that we have, is that these do not require us to be in a specific place. So I'm gonna ask you to notice that. You can do these in any place. You can do these from your living room like you are right now. You can do these in community. You can do these online. So we, not knowing that we would be in this time in the world, already have the spiritual tools available to us to go to. So perhaps you look around this list and you think, oh, I've been doing that one. I've been doing that one. Look for the one that is calling you. That's maybe this little tweaking in your ear. I could use a little more of that one. <laughs> Just notice the one that you could use a little more of here. Maybe notice the one that's a little overused and we could go to another one. So we are already deeply rooted in opportunities to be in spiritual practice individually, in, in our pastoral care, in our business environment, in our home environment, and in our communities. I have just a, a second slide here and I have been using this slide. It's something um, that I've used for a few decades now that has, um, great relevancy whenever we get into high experiences of change or chaos or crisis or whatever you would like to label it, whatever you like to label what has been happening. Whenever we get into a place like that, this cycle, and I call it the beauty because it does bring out the best in humanity. And it's really, really simple. It's these three things that automatically happen. If you can look back to a big change in your life, in your world, in your community, in your career, and, and what we're going through now, and you can hold this simple piece of knowledge for something that happens next in your life, in your world. You can watch this around you, immediately what happens. And so go back to, to March in your mind. Immediately what happens is innovation. So something shifts, and for one of two reasons, we kick into this place of being very innovative and very creative. So there's two reasons for this. One is we want to get to a level of comfort again. <laughs> so we want to recreate or repattern or reproduce something that will allow us to go back to a level of comfort. So that's for the people who want that comfort. Then there are those who are the innovators and perhaps always trying to be innovative and they capitalize on this time and they think, wow, 
this idea I had wouldn't be um, so well accepted or so easily accepted before. And right now there is a vacuum and this is needed. So I'm gonna put it out there and it's more likely to have an uptake. So this idea of innovation, and you can see that it happens really, really quickly. And what I often ask around this innovation is if you can just think back to some of the first things that you saw, the very first things that you saw, if you think back to March. So we had different ways of receiving food, different ways of doing uh, church, different ways of connecting with people. We had to all of a sudden uh, figure out how we're going to do banking, how we're going to do grocery shopping and apps and services and people showed up. And so innovation it doesn't take very long because we're very driven by both comfort and by change, dually as human beings. The next is generosity. So this experience of innovation often drives or leads to an experience of generosity. I have something to share and I want to share it. So I find myself being generous with my gifts, with what I have, with my ideas. And then because we are experiencing the need to be uh, generous or at the receiving end of generosity, we find ourselves in gratitude. And when we are grateful, we open up a space in ourselves to receive more. It's a very interesting dynamic because we don't always think, you know, being more grateful brings more, but it does. And so I'll finish by saying that um, I call this the gig economy. <laughs> you know, we say that we're in the gig economy. There's a lot of short term jobs or short term roles or we're very project driven. So that is generosity and innovation and gratitude the gig economy. And when we are in an experience like we are in right now, we see that pattern and it continues and it moves upon itself, it grows, it spreads, and it really does bring out the best in humanity in a very difficult time. Awesome. You know, uh, as you were talking about the gig economy, you know, Reverend Sonia, um, I really became present to how I experienced the, the very early days of, of COVID because the work I do, I work with clients and um, I'm contracted and the, some of the jobs that I had, everything got canceled. Mm. And so there's no 25th of the month payday. So my hum, human response was, oh my God, what am I going to do? And it really was a question to spirit. What, do you, what would you have me do? And I woke up one morning saying, why don't you expand your coaching business more? There are people who need support, who need, um, who, who are turning in on themselves because of their own fears. So, you know, put yours on rest for, for now and just, just offer help. And that's what I did. Um, I created a program, which I, I, I and you could generate me some money, but I gave it away. I started to just make it available. And I made it available. People were grateful for the, you know, for the, for the um, insights that they were able to generate for themselves. And based on that, it, it brought me some business. And in that space of, general, of, of, of gratitude, I could innovate some more. So the cycle continued to feed. And we at the temple, I know too, we have been experiencing just that. The, having to stay home. Uh, um, you know, some of us were going into, into the technology for the first time, offering church service on Zoom, on Facebook, are you crazy? And we had a lot of challenges, but we stuck with it. And in that space, people, they, we got a lot of support. So there was generosity happening. And, the gen and for that, we were very grateful. And now we are purchasing equipment, we are growing more and more so we can now do we, you know, we are back in the center, you know, it's um, observing the protocols, but we're also doing our services online. So we adapt, we are adapt adaptable creatures and it's been working very, very well for us. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you've given us, a, the, the tools are tools that we use all the time, but there are some of us and I am, you know, mea culpa, that the human element kicks in first. Oh my God, what am I going to do? 
um, rather than, you know, getting into that Zen place and, you know, doing an affirmative prayer or, or meditation or what, what, how can we close the gap between, you know, being human and, 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 and just reminding ourselves of who we are? You know, this reminds me of a cartoon that I saw where you can be a spiritual warrior or a spiritual warrior. <laughs> and so when... <laughs> warrior or a spiritual warrior. warrior. <laughs> and the person is in that uh, warrior yoga pose, you know. So when I'm called into being different, when I'm called into a different time, when I'm called into a challenge, do I go to that fear and concern or do I go to the how can I be different mm -hmm. and it, what you said was really really interesting because people don't always think when they're in fear or or a concern of lack that they should give yet giving is the way out giving is the quickest way from a to b mm -hmm. let me just say that again giving is the quickest way from A to B. Can you just expand a little more on that? Sure. If you if you play Monopoly, you know, you have that get out of jail free card. Yes. <laughs> so in a moment of fear, in a moment of concern, where uh, perhaps in our human selves, our tendency might be to go inside, to hold and protect what we have, to mm. stay limited. You know, if we listen to uh, the quote by Ernest Holmes around mind responds to mind, <laughs> then we're going to get more of that. Mm -hmm. But if we can be in our spiritual selves, if we can take a breath, read the words we need to read, hear the words we need to hear, be reminded by another, take a breath, take a moment, we can move into that spiritual self that we are. Mm -hmm. And that is that none of that is real, mm -hmm. that we create our reality. And so therefore, in doing that, whether in life or business or love or, or family, whatever the experience is, mm -hmm. that things like generosity, gratitude will always move us. And this, this, this gig economy, the generosity, gratitude and innovation, you can use that in so many different ways. If you're feeling stuck, it's that innovation. It's that taking that move. If we're feeling we're in fear to give something. And then all of a sudden things start to come back as your story indicated. And it's not, it's not natural for us if we have not practiced it. But if we view generosity and innovation and gratitude at the level of habit in our life, and we look at what habits we have been creating, have we been, been creating the habits of the spiritual warrior? Mm -hmm. Or have we been creating habits of the spiritual warrior? Gotcha. If we have been in fear and fear and fear, we have built that habit. Got you. So I'm hearing so much in that. Um, so one, you know, spiritual practices are given. You know, whatever we do, however we do it, our spiritual practice is not for when there is a challenge. You know, um, there, there is a, a, a story that our, our founding minister, Reverend Dr. Elma Lums, then told of um, two persons in a conversation. And of course, the story has been told, so it's been watered down. So forgive me the source if it's not so accurate. But the essence is that two people are having a, a, a conversation and one relays to another, um, you know, some, something that has happened that is really overwhelming. And, uh, and so the, the other person says, boy, I look like, well, if I go pray. And the, the first person responds, Lord, it's so bad. You mean is that it come to? So, you know, translated in our vernacular, you know, it is it, prayer. I mean, it, is this what we are left? Is all we are left with? Prayer. But prayer is supposed to be like washing our face and brushing our teeth. You have you do it because it's a habit. And and it then makes a difference when these things happen. Um, I have a question here. Uh, or a comment, she says, from, from Shesi Boo. Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, Arlene Hilton says, you make do with what you have at hand. And then Shesi Boo says, generosity. What do you say to those of us who say to ourselves, we have to hold on to what we have because of the uncertainty that exists? Wow, you know, suppose I don't get another job. Suppose the money doesn't come. Suppose 
suppose, suppose. How would you respond to that? Holding on to what we have is like doing 50% or half of the concept of affirmative prayer. So we do affirmative prayer, we treat, we do spiritual mind treatment, and then step two of that, we move our feet. <laughs> Part two, we move our feet. So if we hold, then we have at that moment that we hold all that we will ever have. And then we watch the depletion. It goes down and down and down from there because we drew the line at what we are allowed to have what we are willing to have and what we feel we deserve. So the move your feet would mean that you're out and you're doing things to get that other job or you're out and you're, you're meeting people or you're out and you're giving and in the giving you'll be receiving. Staying hermit-like and holding everything that we have is a very finite story. We are built as interactive human beings. We are built to connect, we are built to be part of a reciprocal relationship, of a symbiotic relationship. And when we close that half off and hold our, us and everything we have back, it is like putting that finch in the garden hose. Mm -hmm. And the resentment mm -hmm. builds up, the water builds up behind, the resentment builds up behind, the concern and the fear only gets bigger. And the only way to really release that is to release it and be part of the flow mm -hmm. of everything that is in front of you. But it's, you know, um, may I add something? Oh, the, Reverend. Uh, sure. the state of mind that allows you or the impulse to hold on is founded on loss. Like attracts like. So if you, you stay in that position of loss, you will only attract more situations that will allow you to deplete what already you have. That's why giving and generosity mm -hmm from that state where you start with what you have now and branch out allows more to in, to flow in so it's important mm -hmm. to understand that so perfect the, reverend Anne. And, and you know the other thing too that if if, if we take a breath of air <laughs> and only hold it so long you know um it, it it's going to hurt and and we i i have never ever thought that the air will finish and, and it's been a good metaphor for me for the abundance of spirit. Um, you know, it, you know, we have to breathe in, but then we also have to breathe out. So, they, they, you know, we receive, we give. We receive, we give. So this is how we practice circulation. Um, Tracy Brown is online. Hi, Tracy. Uh, she says, yes, treat and move your feet. <laughs> we, well, we're really happy to have you, Tracy. We need to catch up soon. Yeah, so treat and move your feet. I think Reverend John is on to welcome Reverend John. I know you couldn't stay away. Okay. Yeah, so we have to just recognize and know that we are part of an infinite universe that is forever giving to us. And we need to just allow the circulation to flow. I, I have a question. Um, we at, at Centers for Spiritual Living, we are all familiar with all these um, practices that you have spoken of: formative prayer, co-creation, meditation, visioning, mindfulness, and so on. Um, we've, we've attracted a number of other persons who, um, you know, visit other churches or who are members of other churches, other denominations. What would you say to um, our um, other communities who, um, could, and again, I want to release the otherness. You know, we are, we, we just express differently. What would you say to um, persons who don't have the exact practices that we do? How do we maintain our, our connectedness mm -hmm. and um, our focus during this time? You know, it's such a call for non-judgment. Mm -hmm. It's such a call for that. When we have, um, you mentioned visitors and we have, you know, people who window shop and now we actually window shop. We're all in our little windows here shopping. <laughs> We're all in our windows watching each other. So we have the opportunity in connecting with other people to learn about their practices too. The, the greatest um, divisiveness begins when we think 
that there is something right or wrong about a person who practices differently. We we practice affirmative prayer. We are we are with the one. Uh, we are not praying to the one. There are many religions that pray to, and we pray we pray with. We are part of the one. The one is part of us, and uh, you know people people think differently in different religions. Right now, in this time in the world, though, there is such a call for unification and for understanding. And so hearing from our communities around the world on a weekly basis about what they're experiencing, they have seen great expansion. And the majority of the expansion that we're hearing of are people who haven't been to any church or center or spiritual environment for years and either they decided to find us. They've never had church in their life. They've decided to find us and something resonated. Or we have people who were in more traditional religions who went back to their traditional religion, found that they wanted something different or they wanted uh, something to add on. And so they really are window shopping right now. And I think the worst thing that we could do is probably put a judgment uh, to that. It is a real call for us to, to ask why we have a rub around that what is it about us mm. that notices that and when we look at the world and we can even maybe step back one more step the world immediately yes. as this pandemic hit was seeking faith why is this happening what is this all about i want answers have i been forsaken has something occurred is this a response to something what will happen next there was a lot of ambiguity a lot of uncertainty so people are seeking faith i think this is a time organizationally for us to be uh, more welcoming and always welcoming in a way that we always have been and maybe even wider to whatever that means. We do not know what a month or a year will bring, sure. but we will be recombined in a, in a different way inside ourselves, inside our relationships and inside our communities. I'm interested to see what happens. Okay, awesome. We have a couple of comments. Um, Tamu says, sometimes we do need a little divine nudge. And I think she was responding to um, those of us who um, oftentimes fall into just being human. and the, the path that's ahead of us and what's possible. And then we have um, um, Lilith, there's a little song that says, if, um, if, you give a little, if you give a little love away, a whole lot of love will come back to you. So the more you give away, the more it will come back to you. Mm -hmm. And of course, Reverend John, he says, how can companies follow the beauty in the cycle of chaos like innovation to generosity to gratitude instead of stopping the payroll. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I, I, I think I got it. Got it. It's not his question, it's Shesibu's question. Um, she says, how can companies follow the beauty in the cycle of chaos, the idea of innovation, generosity, and gratitude instead of stopping the payroll? Mm -hmm. Yes. Organizations, uh, whether they're corporate or not-for-profit entities, have been having quite a variety of experiences uh, at this time. And I, I want to go back to um, the labeling of something being good or bad. You yourself, uh, Sandra, have this great example of deciding to divert your attention and energy somewhere else. And so sometimes uh, the end of an experience for us can be a sacred experience, and we may not see it in the moment for that. But as we look back, if you've lived long enough to, to have a history behind you, you know that some of the things that you felt in that moment were, were quote unquote bad or difficult, um, that they've ended or resulted in something that led you down another path. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to know in the moment. Uh, I think you know, the, the world is going to be recombined and reorganized. And, um, and some say we needed that. And yet it's still jarring um, the day to day. 
And so many of our communities have set up experiences where pastoral care is no longer about visiting someone who's unwell, but there is a career and business pastoral care that's happening. So groups that are getting together to review each other's resume or uh, go to volunteer somewhere and some of those volunteer jobs turn into gig economy jobs or work that comes their way. You just don't know in that particular moment how it is going to, to, uh, to happen, yeah. So, so I'm hearing in that there's there's a need to just trust the process. You know, this is surrender. I mean, we do, we do what we need. We treat and move our feet. But to think about what's going to happen and to worry about what's going to happen really um, disconnects the energy or, or um, moves us away from um, fully experiencing the, the blessing that can come um, during this time. But reinvention yeah, comes during this time. Reinvention right. happens when one thing ends, another births, and it can be difficult in the moment and for a period of time, mm -hmm. and it builds resiliency. And that's not to diminish the experience that organizations or individuals are having. This is a difficult time, and it's an opportunity for us to reach out to others and to help and to look at even what our pastoral care looks like. Yes, right. yes. Reverend Anne. That's exactly what I wanted to ask um, Reverend Sonia, because the move from just visiting in terms of whether it's illness or no, and providing career and professional ideas through that relationship, which is what I like in the sense that for all, it's just like a company in the sense that, all right, we are caused, this is a time when you know, your, um, the funds coming in is not as, as easy as it used to be. And you are called to innovate, use, I mean, use your staff some other way or for us as churches to provide that connection with our members to ensure that we fulfill their needs. Yes, they are isolated, but yes, you know, we are beyond borders now. The fact is that virtually we can provide the kind of care for each other as well as to give information so that, you know, ideas like this, gig, gig, I love this idea with the innovate generosity is something that you know you can expand outside of our spiritual community and companies can adopt Chesibu, innovate within the company it will lead to gratitude and probably expansion of how you used to do things i like that reverend sonia i really do mm. yes yes um there's a question um arlene is asking how do we encourage others to be generous during these times and i think you kind of said much of that but perhaps to reiterate a little bit mm. give to them mm. it sounds counterintuitive but it is the giving and and thinking of new ways to be that has people be generous if somebody is not um being generous there there is a a, a reason behind that. There's something at the back of that. So that is the fear. And that is the concern that we talked about earlier. And, and mm -hmm. also the opportunity to not judge them for the fact that they are in fear and they can't be generous in that moment. But when yes. we can be the role models and we can be the demonstrators and we can be that and the light that shines from us when we are being that is so attractive that others want to be able to be that, you know, the, the so biggest, essence, go ahead. No, I'm just saying in essence, then when they see us breathing in and breathing out and it's, and we're surviving the, the breathing out, they can perhaps be inspired, you know, to aspire and to breathe in and breathe out too. I love that. Yeah, it is such a call, such a time for mm -hmm. us to be compassionate. And in order to be compassionate with one another, we have to take care of ourselves and we have to be able to, to, be, to be with others as well in the seeking. And we talked about, you know, uh, before we started the recording, they, who is an introvert and who's an extrovert? <laughs> and even people who are introverted are getting to a place where, you know, I, I, I miss a hug. I might be introverted, but I miss a hug. And our biggest call in our chaplaincy program is for chaplains, for first responders and corporate chaplains. Mm -hmm. Because okay. of the impact that's happening for people 
and then they feel in fear, you know, around around their work. And then the, those that are working so hard, uh, given the environment in, in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, our Reverend Sonia is asking, um, how, um, how can we in Jamaica connect more with the global community? And, 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 and I want to just add a little to that. Mm -hmm. um, a part of, of, of this session today is about spiritual community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do we maintain our community? And at the same time, as Reverend Sonia, our Reverend Sonia is asking, uh, you know, connect more with the global community. Well, I would hazard a guess that it has never been easier. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. A year ago, two years ago, we would have said we would like to connect more. We'd like to have a way to be more connected. We also wa wanted our communities to feel more technologically comfortable. And didn't the universe take care of the how on that one? So here we are. Uh, some practical mm -hmm. ways to connect globally inside the organization is to um, go to our website, rcsl.org, to go and you can see all mm -hmm. of the all of the events that are happening. You can see the resources that we have offered in our organization. If you're a Facebook person or an Instagram person, we have Centers for Spiritual Living on Facebook. We also have the Science of Mind magazine. Uh, which is distributed oh. around the world and it has a digital version that you can also um, subscribe to so that there's no concern about things getting to you or taking a while. And there are many ways uh, through our, our email communication from uh, Centers for Spiritual Living around all the events, much of what shows up on our Facebook. And there are ways that you can connect in everything from uh, being part of a Facebook Live interview, being part of the Heart of Peace meditation, which is a weekly meditation that's offered to the world. You can participate or be a recipient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have events that come up. We move our events around geographically so that people can attend. Our next big convention is in February and it is virtual and it was always planned to be virtual. And that is wonderful because the, there has been very little accommodation that we've had to make. So there are, there are many opportunities for resources in this way, whether you want to be with us or you want to be on the World Ministry of Prayer site and have a prayer, go on to global services, look at what's happening in the many different languages. We have PDFs and books. I'm going to stop there. Just have no, fun no, looking no, around. No, stop here because you have managed also. I think it's next month you're having Deepak Chopra on um, yes. virtually. You yes. The spiritual education, um, that side of CSL has expanded. We can get chaplaincy, chaplaincy programs now. You can be certified as focus ministry. I there's know. so much that has been happening. I mean, I've been watching with, I mean, excitement as the new programs that we offer now yes <laughs> it's really a really special time wonderful oh. yes we we offer programs that uh, are free and then at various costs so depending on what you want to do there's a range of options and you plug in where is appropriate for you and where you feel called mm -hmm. oh wow you know a couple of comments um, Shesi says about generosity. Sometimes generosity is simply returning a text or a call. Mm -hmm. And Paula Powell on giving says this is intrinsically Jamaican. You know, we always have a little extra in the pot. Um, or mangoes, we give away our mangoes in, when the tree bears or aki tree um, or pear trees, whatever is bearing, there's something to give to the neighbors. Um, people bring things down to church on a Sunday morning and just give them away. That's part of, of just being generous. Um, I'd just like to go back to something you said earlier and it really stuck with me. Um, in, in, in being um, really rising to, to the challenge of this time, we have to look within to what's important. And this is perhaps where our values um, ground us, what is important to us. And then the second thing you said that we, we need to look to see what other people need. And, and sometimes giving, as you say, can just be a virtual hug. Hey, how are you doing? I was just thinking of you. That can make such a difference in a person's life. 
And the third thing you said was that also we need to know what we need to know what what is where where is the gap, and if if I can fill it myself, fine. If not, there's a, a, a there are resources that are available, and to feel comfortable to call and say I I need help, even if it's just a prayer. I just need you to listen. You know that's part of of community. You know um so. Maybe perhaps the last thing that I, I might want to ask is, how do we strengthen our community vibe at at home and with our within our center? How do we, um, you know, the same faces will turn up at church. The same persons are part of the um, the work of the church. How do we expand and strengthen our our community so persons feel ah, the joy of service? One of the ways to expand is actually to maintain. And I know that can sound counterintuitive, but if we continue to take care of the people that are already with us and we know need our attention, then we may end up just organically expanding that way. One of the ways that uh, many communities have looked to, uh, to decide what mm. to do and what's important right now for them is to look at all that they used to offer and all the ways they used to be together prior to having to move online. Mm -hmm. And they can ensure that one by one that each of the ways that they were being together either still exists maybe it's gone online, or that you've had a replacement for it. So for instance, if you've had a youth program or you had a book study or you had a, a cooking group, you want to organizationally as a community, uh, try to continue as much as you can, even if it looks different so that people can feel some sense of uh, security, some sense of familiarity and stability in the midst of everything. And sometimes expansion just happens from uh, attempting to do the same things in a new way, to have the same experience, the same care. And then secondly, when you look at expanding, uh, expanding intentionally is different from expanding organically. So I mentioned if, you, if you're taking care of everything, you know, people love what they're experiencing. They, they tell more people, you're online, you're already reaching more people. But if you want to expand and you get your group together who is committed to expanding, maybe that's your board, maybe it's a, a couple of committees or some uh, uh, really deeply committed people who want to specifically look at expansion, look into where you want to expand. What does expansion look like? If we haven't named it, then we don't know if we get there. And sometimes if we haven't named it, then we're pretty sure we're failing at it but we can't answer what it's supposed to look like. So the question I would pose if I was meeting with your board, for instance, is what would expansion look like? And I bet if we have 14 people or six people, we have 14 or six views of what that means. But the very vocalizing of it, the very sharing of it can gain commitment around the things that are the same that showed up in the conversation or in the room. And then some of the new ideas that maybe only one person had. And so, you, you're, so then you are agreeing on what you'd like to do and in order to expand and what expansion could look like. And then you intentionally set forward into activities and actions and ways mm -hmm. that will get you there. You know, there, there is that um, uh, Dr. Zeus say, if, if you don't know where you're going, you know, you can just wander and you'll just find wherever you are. <laughs> but with, a, with a, a path that you plan, you can actually step-by-step step move forward there. And there's so many options right now, online and live and with distance and space. So I look forward to seeing how that shows up for your community. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting that you, you, um, you spoke about um, that because we are in the process of preparing for our, for our summit which is um, we're expecting to have a, at the end of October. And we were struggling a little bit with um, naming it. And so what we decided to do exercise around um, just inviting um, various stakeholders from within the, the, the church community to, to just brainstorm together to see what, 
you know, where, what is the thinking? Because even as a as a as a leadership council, it's it's hard, it's sometimes there is where well, little myopic. So we are expanding and inviting others, you know, and 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 we're moving forward because we, you know, have plan for our center that allows us to um, to bring the mission of the of, of centers for spiritual living and and manifest as um, prosperity for our center as well as for every single member of our community. That that's something that we really would like to see happen. You know, um, let me just take a, little, a couple of last comments and then we can wrap up. Um, Shesi has posted one of, uh, okay, okay, she says, so true, allowing someone to help you. So this is from Carol, allowing someone to help you expands their receptivity quotient. That's from Carol Campbell and Paula Powell. We have to show our vulnerabilities. That is just opening up and asking for help. Um, this is such an amazing community. Um, it is, this is my spiritual family. This, this creates so much connection and has provided so much support for myself and so many of us here that it's, we are family. It's, it's just an amazing um, experience of family. That's how I feel anyway. Okay, um, Reverend Anne, um, any any um, final comments before we wrap up? You 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 mentioned being family. That's the feeling mm -hmm. that you get when you're allowed to be vulnerable, and we are all here to support each other. And the fact mm -hmm. is that each of us come on yes on a particular journey, but the fact is that our strengths are our expertise we all combine together because the, the 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 power of the whole is much more than the individual parts and that is what is going to take all of our centers forward that power of knowing that yes we are facilitating each other awakening to that magnificence within and the word must work for everyone once we get on that platform mm -hmm. it really has been uh, i mean the the synergy between us and Centers for Spiritual Living, Home Office, Nicole merged in terms of the spiritual education. I mean, we know everything. Thank you, Reverend Sona, to all your staff and our, as well as to our community to ensure that, you know, that's what keeps us together, being able to be vulnerable and support each other in that time. Yes, yes. And, you know, earlier Reverend John's comments was, thanks, family. I'm enjoying the conversation. So, I mean, this sense of family that we have at the Temple of Light um, Center for Spiritual Living is, is it's infectious and it is, it is the, the, the foundation, it is, this is the rock that we, that, that hold together as a community. And, you know, you know, as I said, this too shall pass. We have so much that we can move forward with. Um, and, and we really, really are grateful to you, um, um, our, our new Reverend Sonia, because we have, you know, when, when, I, uh, we, when we were talking about you um, doing this, it was, and we said Reverend Sonia, of course, it's our Dr. Sonia Davidson that comes to mind, um, but now we have our, our, new, um, our new Jamaican, honorary Jamaican <laughs> Reverend Sonia. So this was really, really awesome. Um, um, we're going to ask you to to just, you know, do a a, a closing um, for us. But is there any any, as we would say in Jamaica, any last link that you would mm. like to share? Last words mm. or closing remarks is yeah. better, perhaps better. Yeah, my closing remarks would be that I am so grateful to have been in this experience with you folks today. And I'm grateful for our global community of which the Temple of Light is such a beautiful member. Thank you so much for the light that your group and that your family shines out into the world. I invite everyone within the sound of my voice to enter into that gig economy and receive the blessings yes. that come with that action. Yes, awesome. Okay, oh, that's awesome. I'm those words can just lead us into our closing affirmative prayer, which we'll be delighted if you do, do with us. 
I am delighted to do it. Thank you. So we take this collective breath in this moment together, recognizing the family that we are. Knowing that the oneness of that divine presence dwells within each of us, no matter where we sit on this planet at this very time and in the very space that we occupy. For there is love and there is peace and there's beautiful support by the universe, creating our resilient selves, creating our non-judgmental selves, creating our wide birth of compassion, creating that self-care. And so as perfect emanations, each one of us of that divine spark, we know that as Dr. Ernest Holmes said, we create our atmosphere by the very thoughts and feelings that we allow to enter our consciousness, that we allow to leave our lips and that we allow to move our feet. And so in the presence of only ever and always that divine knowing, we choose our words, we choose our thoughts and we choose our actions as we enter that gig economy in every moment, in every morning, as our feet hit the ground and we begin that day. And so knowing that through innovation that breeds generosity, that leads us to gratitude, that causes us to be innovative and so on and so on and so on, the beautiful cycle of chaos, that beautiful cycle is ours to befriend and ours to have dwell in our hearts and ours to have motivate our lives. And so it is from a place of deep gratitude that I acknowledge the Temple of Light community, that I acknowledge the teachings of Dr. Ernest Holmes and all other mystics, sages, theologians, academics, and beautiful, beautiful sayers that lead us to the knowing and the knowledge that arise here at this moment. And with that, I simply release my word into that affirmative law that only knows to say yes. And I invite you to say with me, and so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Wow, what a joy to have had this experience this evening. What a joy to have had you as our very special guest. Thank you. For agreeing to do this. It's, it's just awesome. It's part, part of our connectivity, our um, being part of this wonderful global community. Um, I also would like to thank our, our technical support, um, Theo, Vance, and Steve. Thank you so much for making this experience happen um, to, you know, allowing us to connect with other centers across the globe and to make this experience happen. Thanks to all who tuned in on Facebook this evening to have been part of this conversation. And, and please share the link with your friends and family so that you know, we can go back and visit as we, um, we, you know, we have the time to do so. This has been a real special treat for me. Well, Reverend John, <laughs> see you in a little bit. And so I say, um, you know, until next time we, we see each other, um, or perhaps it will be virtually again. I just say a wonderful and beautiful evening to you all. Reverend Sonia, thank you again so much from our heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.